Welcome back to the show, Toronto. I'm Ben Mulrooney. And starting next year, it's going to be a little less advantageous tax-wise to list your home as a short-term rent rental on either Airbnb or VRBO. The, uh, the government is introducing tax measures to ease a severe rental housing shortage by limiting income tax deductions on short-term rentals on services such as Airbnb. Uh, starting in 2024, the government's going to spend $50 million over three years to enable municipal enforcement of restrictions on short-term rentals. So to talk about this and more, Devel Morrison with Bosley Real Estate Limited is, is joining us now. Good morning, Devel. Good morning, Ben. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So do you think this is going to have any impact on the short-term rental market? Uh, well, okay. So first of all, they, they've now okay, sort of come out to say that you can't have write-offs if you're running your property illegally. So they're saying that if you're actually following the restrictions and licensing in your within that municipality, yeah. you can uh, continue to get write-offs, to use your write-offs, which is good. Um, the other thing is if your Airbnb is owned in the name of a corporation, you're most likely also able to continue doing those write-offs. So those are some of the, I guess, the holes um, within the plan. I mean, and so... Keep in mind, like I own Airbnb rentals. I, I run the licensed short-term accommodators of Prince Edward County. I think what I'm annoyed about about this is that they're going to spend $50 million to help municipalities enforce their Airbnb rules. Why not spend that money on creating more housing? Because the reason why investors go towards short-term short rentals in the first place is simply because the, the, the Landlord Tenant Board, the Residential Tenancies Act, tip so much in favor of the tenant that if they have an issue with the tenant, they can never kick them out. And so if you really want to create change and to cr increase the number of long-term rentals, then what you should do is do the hard, heavy lifting of changing the Residential Tenancies Act. But disallowing people for write-offs, all that's going to happen is these people are just going to sell their places and those there will just be a glut of condo inventory on the market. They're not going to automatically turn them into long-term rentals. Well, I, I think it's the number that shocks so many people. Like in, in 2020, there was an estimated almost 19,000 homes being used as short-term rental properties between Montreal, Toronto, and Vancouver. And we know that number's gone up since then. So I, I think that I think they're trying to get at least a little bit of that back on the market for people who, who uh, are looking for a place to rent. Well, but people won't do that. <laughs> this is the thing. This is where a government in theory versus, you know, what is going to happen in actuality are two different things. And, you know, that 19,000 number that you quoted, I believe that's less than 1% of the housing stock. So how much of a, of a increase in long-term rentals are we really going to see? Especially, as I mentioned to you before, there's a lot of people that they're not going to turn their place into a long-term rental because they have no rights. So, so you think that this is dead on arrival? Mm hmm. Interesting. Absolutely. Or if people really want to skirt this, not that I'm giving tax advice, but check with your accountant. <laughs> they could just put their property in the name of a corporation and they should be OK to continue doing the write offs. But we are Again, not suggesting people do that. <laughs> <laughs> check with your accountant. <laughs> All right, uh, Devel, let's move on. Uh, an, another decision by Ottawa. They're loosening the mortgage stress test uh, in this uh, fall fiscal update that's coming up. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and this is for renewing mortgages, of course, not for uh, brand new mortgages. Yeah. And so here's the thing. If you are a homeowner, your mortgage comes up for renewal, you can roll that mortgage into a new mortgage with your current lender and you don't have to requalify. So you don't have to get the mortgage stress test. You can just get whatever rate they give you and you can't shop around. So the idea behind this is allowing uh, mortgage holders, homeowners to actually be able to shop around to get the best rate without having to requalify with the mortgage stress test, because th that stress test is, you know, 2% higher than the current rate. So people are currently getting stress tested at like 7%. It's ridiculous. Yeah, well, I think a lot of people when when their mortgage comes up for renewal, they get sticker shock compared to what they were paying the first time around. So having this exactly. thing loosened for them right now keeps them in their homes. Absolutely, which is a huge help. Now, keep in mind, when I was looking at the fine print about this, it said, it said it's for insured mortgages only, i.e. mortgages under $1 million with less than 20% down payment. So if we go back to how much houses people pay for houses in Toronto, this doesn't help a Toronto homeowner. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me play devil's advocate for a second. If we're loosening yeah. up these stress tests, we're making it uh, essentially we're letting 
people who, by definition, are a little bit riskier uh, to, to, to stay in the market. And given the fact that people keep talking about this potential bubble uh, here in, in, in Canada, is that the right move? Yes, it is. I mean, we've already heard from the Bank of Canada. Rates seem to be at the high point. It seems like rates are only going to come down from now and not they're, they're not coming down in the next three months. So I don't want people out there to be like, woohoo, rates are coming down. You know, they might come down a year from now. Right. And we know that they'll come down much slower than the way they at the pace they went yeah. up. So, um, yes, this is a help to people. But I also think we shouldn't have the stress test anymore at all. You know, they put in that stress test to make sure that people could carry their mortgages at really high rates. Well, guess what? Those really high rates are here now. <laughs> now it's time to ease, the, you know, your foot off the brakes, please. So so you want to get rid of it altogether? Absolutely, for sure. What, 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 what would the immediate impact of that be? It would allow more people to get into the housing market and buy a place instead of renting. You know, we talk about there, there's lots of inventory right now in the market to be purchased, whether it's condos or houses. But when it comes to long term rentals, that's kind of like playing musical chairs at this point. If you get if you have to look for a place for rent, they're really hard to come by. It, it's simply not easy. So you are better off being able to buy a place. And I know people are gonna be like, ah, you're a real estate agent. Of course, you're going to say that. <laughs> yeah, you'd be busier. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, I mean, the best way I think for people to be able to gain wealth is through their house, through their principal residence. And so I think if we don't give everybody the opportunity to actually be able to buy a place, then we're not allowing them that opportunity to build their wealth base. And so I think, yeah, we don't need the mortgage stress test anymore. Let it rip. Let people be able to go buy a place if they so choose. Obviously, if they want to keep renting, let them do that too. There is an entire generation of Canadians who have just accepted the the belief that they will never buy a home. So if you're saying that changing this rule could change that for them, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, this is only for mortgage renewals, but, and oh, and I should say, it's actually only voluntary for lenders. So this doesn't have a lot of teeth. Ah, uh, so it's, it looks good on paper. <laughs> yeah, totally. Devel, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Uh, have a good Saturday.